So, Mayor, Commissioners, this is our mid-year status update. So along with your general fund and our enterprise fund updates, we also do a number of things um, for mid-year to make sure we're tracking okay, right? We have our circuit breakers, we have our, you know, check-in on our departmental spend, et cetera. Um, the, the good news is, you know, there, there aren't any, there isn't any, major in either direction. The bad news is there isn't anything major. And, you know, <laughs> you know we're running kind of flat, um, but for some timing issues. Um, so that's the good and the bad uh, together because, you know, we'd always love to have more revenue. So I'm going to turn it over to Abby Patel-Jones to start the um, presentation on general fund. Okay, before we do that, just want to make a note of the fact that Commissioner Charles Lost and Commissioner Jones Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, City Manager. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll kick it off with the general fund. Um, thank you. Um, so we'll go over the statement and talk through some high-level summary before we dive deeper into the um, analysis um, that will show as of June our performance. Um, all revenues, as you can see here, all revenues have increased 0.5% uh, or a little over $500,000 when compared to 2023. Compared to budget, um, we are also performing better. Um, we are $2.2 million um, above the year-to-date budget or 2.1%. Um, the largest increase, as you can see, is in our income tax category, which is also our largest source of revenue. Income tax is $2.3 million above 2023, or 2.9%. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more in detail about income tax in the next slide. Um, property tax and other taxes also saw an increase. Um, you may recall from our March presentation that property tax and other taxes category was down. Um, and that was due to the pending settlement for the first half of property tax that we were awaiting from the Montgomery County. Um, as of June, we've received that settlement. Um, and so that's why you're seeing that increase uh, with the property values going up. We're seeing, we're seeing property tax um, and other taxes going up by 1 million or 24.6% compared to last year, same time. The other notable increase is in other intergovernmental category, which is up. 87.5% or $1.2 million. And this is largely due to the timing of casino payment, which we will discuss in detail a little bit later in the presentation. Um, the other thing to note here, which we've been saying all throughout the year is the local government fund. Um, it has a decline of 100% compared to last year because we haven't received local government fund revenue since August of 2023 um, due to our pending liability for the for the photo enforcement fund um, that the local government fund is being reduced by the state. Um, based on the projections um, uh, and looking at the reductions um, that we're seeing month over month in the local government fund, we expect to uh, fulfill our liability by October of this year. And so for November and December, we expect to see a payment for local government fund this year. Um, the largest, we already talked about that. Um, on the expenditure side, um, as of June 2024, expenditures were under budget, um, which means we have a favorable variance by $2.7 million or 2.2%. Um, expenditures were $5.5 million higher than 2023 amounts. Personnel costs, which is the largest expense on the expenditure side, were $4.1 million under budget and $1.3 million above 2023 amounts. Although there were there was a 7% wage increase for most employees, we're not seeing that year over year increase. And this is partly due to the absence of lump sum payment. As you may recall, in 2023, we had a lump sum payment, which was paid out in January of 2023. Um, whereas in 2024, we do not have that lump sum payment. Um, the ongoing vacancies and the delay in police contract is also contributing to not that much increase year over year. Compared to budget, contracts and materials um, and other uses were up $1.2 million. And compared to 2023, 
contracts and materials and other uses were up $3.4 million or 16.5%. Much of this increase is in various maintenance costs, uh, management and public service contracts and payments to internal service funds. Um, investments um, are um, shown in the purple section here. Um, and as you can see, investments are front loaded. Um, we process most investments in February of 2023 um, so that we have time for procurement of those capital equipment and projects. At the end of 2024, sources exceeded uses by $8.3 million. And this is largely due to the early funding of investments. Um, and then also we have a one-time budget solution um, in our 2024 budget, which is a transfer from the photo enforcement fund into the general fund in the amount of $5 million. That transfer hasn't been processed as of June of 2024. And so that's why we're seeing that large delta between sources over uses. As for the income tax, um, as I mentioned, it's the largest source of revenue for the general fund. As of June, income tax makes up 76% of total revenue in the general fund. Um, and as you can see, net collections for June increased 2.9% and are 2.5% or 2 million above the mid-year target. Withholding collections have climbed 6.8% or 4.6 million over 2023. The 2024 collection growth is largely attributed in the withholding section, is largely attributed to the uh, Five Friday phenomenon. And so in 2024, we have one extra Five Friday month as opposed to 2023. And so that's why we're seeing that big delta year over year in the withholding category. Um, on the business profit side, business profit makes up of corporate profits and partnerships. Corporate profits are the larger of the two. Um, and they declined collectively 20.2% or $2.1 million. Um, corporate profit declined 22.1% and partnership declined 15.1%. And this is a trend that we've been seeing all throughout the year. Uh, payments to individuals or payments by individuals um, also declined by 5.2% or 203,300 when we compare the information to 2023. Um, also, just to note, on the refund side, um, refunds are about the same as where we were last year in 2023. Um, and so you can see in the chart, um, in the table above, um, we processed $2.4 million worth of refunds in 2023, we're about at the same amount in 2024. Uh, and in the chart below, in the bottom page, um, is where you can see that Five Friday phenomenon. The green and blue highlighted section represents the five Friday month. And as you can see, 2024, we will have five total five Friday months as opposed to normally we only have four. The last time when we had the five Fridays was in 2018. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeanette to talk through the revenue category. Thank you. I'm going to highlight some of our revenue categories. Abby kind of touched on them a little bit, but I'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, the first one is property tax. So um, I'm sure, as you saw, property tax is up just under 25% um, over 2023. And as you know, so a lot of property values in the area were quite a bit higher than they were last year due to the county's um, reappraisal or revaluation. So um, the county auditor conducts a reappraisal of property values every six years. So that's a full-blown reappraisal that occurs <clears throat> excuse me, every six years. And then in between that period, every three years, there is kind of like a desk audit or a re revaluation that occurs. So in 2023 was that revaluation. Um, and during that revaluation, uh, property values actually increased 22.9% from 2023. So this was quite a big increase. Um, but this is still under the peak of prior to the Great Recession in 2006. So in 2023, property values were just slightly over $2 billion in total. They were about $2.1 billion if you go back to 2006. So we're just slightly under where we were. Um, but the delta in terms of where we were from 2023 has, is about 23% higher. 
And you can really see that significant growth in the bar chart why we are up 24.6% 24 higher in revenue. And then when the reval was done kind of in 2020, we would have experienced that revenue come in in 2021. It just grew about 6.9%. So you can really see how much more these property values have grown and how much more revenue we're bringing in in 2024. Um, so this growth was kind of offset a little bit. You'll see at the bottom, the hotel lodging tax. So that did fall off. Um, partway through 2023, so if you remember the convention center, that transitioned to the Miami Valley um, Convention Facilities Authority, and that happened in about April of 2021, so you'll see a little bit of revenue still come in in 2021, and then it has truly fallen off in terms of what we've received from 2022 to, to now to 2024. So a slight change in terms of hotel lodging tax, but really we're seeing a big kind of gap in growth in terms of uh, property values due to the property revaluation that occurred in 2023. Other charges for services. So this is kind of a catch-all category, so to speak. It can include a lot of the charges that we uh, have. So overall, other charges for services are down slightly about 6%. Um, $26,000. I'll talk to a couple of areas where they're down. Um, so the first one, will, will you, you will see the largest dollar value decrease is in your parking charges. So that is down just over $160,000 or about 15.5%. So some of this is down because of the um, elimination of parking charges at our municipal garage for employees. And, um, additionally, we're seeing fewer events and fewer Parking charges go through at the Oregon garage near the convention center. So those two kind of combined are driving down some of that year over year growth. We may actually decline in terms of parking charges for the city. Um, the second largest dollar value decline you will see in that police charges line. So that is now $104,000 or $500, just under 20% year over year. And so there's a little bit of nuance in here, which I'm sure you're not surprised about. So um, what is in the police charges, those are typically charges for either contracted or non-contracted police overtime work. So I'm sure you're aware with some higher attrition levels, lower staffing levels, there's less time for them to do overtime contracted and non-contracted work. Obviously, if they're going to do overtime, it's going to go to first response of emergencies. And then they would be able to do some of this non-contracted and contracted work. So some of that would include um, like being at scenes for the construction on the highway, or if they needed to do um, like be on a specialized unit, like a DA unit or a drug unit, something like that. So if there's they have a little bit fewer time to do that overtime contracted work here. So that's why you are seeing that decline. Um, the other reduction you'll see down is in the the plans development and exam fees, and that is down about 41%. So that was starting to peak kind of post COVID when there was a lot of activity in the area, construction activity, and it's starting to kind of peak back down a little bit. And then the other kind of three areas that are gonna get lumped together. So your indirect cost reimbursements, your miscellaneous charges, and your municipal court charges, they're down just about 2.2% in total. There is good news. <laughs> so. All of these declines have been offset by an increase in recreation charges. So that is up just over 59%. So some of what we're seeing with the recreation charges, so that um, just over $200,000 to $600,000 that is brought in, it's kind of returning back to what it was pre-COVID. So prior to COVID in 2019, it was about $222,000, $220,000. So we're seeing um, higher Kind of summer camp registrations, so we're sneaker program registrations, and that's why you're seeing the recreation charges are kind of starting to eat that up. So that is kind of offsetting some of those. Other okay, and then other intergovernmental. So um, other intergovernmental, as you probably noticed from the statement, it is up about 87.5%. And part of that, as Abby kind of talked through, so the largest portion of these other intergovernmental revenues is consumer you know, taxes. So you'll see kind of from 2020 to 2022, we have consistently kind of 
brought in two of the four, so we get a payment every quarter. So two payments were received as of June through that period. But at this point last year, in 2023, we had only received one of those quarterly payments. So that quarterly payment did not come in until about August. So we didn't see that normalized until August in terms of those um, two quarterly payments. So you are seeing truthfully, it's not down, down. We did get the, we did get the quarterly payment of about a little over a million dollars last year in August. Um, but that is why in terms of percentage of dollar value, you are seeing it down, um, um, I guess, year over year, because we received the two quarters in 2024, we're only going to receive one quarter in 2023. Um, and then the other big area I'll talk through is probably the loader and beer permit revenue line. That is uh, 100 and almost 75, 175%. Um, so there's some little nuance in here. So every year at the state level for um, liquor and beer permit licenses, so the um, timing in terms of when people can renew their license kind of changes. There's three specific districts that they identify throughout Ohio. And depending upon where you live and your location is of your business, that's when your date is for your renewal date. And that kind of consistently changes. So it's just the timing in terms of when we got those receipts this year versus last year. Um, so at this point, we received our revenue earlier in the year. Last year, we didn't receive the bulk of our revenue until about later in the year. So that's where you're seeing that big kind of difference year over year from 2023 to 2024. And lastly, some big picture kind of overall revenue trends for you. So, um, as Abby mentioned, in terms of income tax, so overall income tax we saw an increase this, this year from 2023 of about 2.9%. When we look back to 2020, so comparing where we are in 2024 to 2020, income tax has grown 22.4% in the period. Um, you'll notice kind of in the bar graph, so the blue is the income tax, that went up 22.4%, and then the green is all other revenue categories. So all other revenue categories from 2020 have gone up just 1.8%. So you can really see that reliance on income tax as a portion of our total revenue, especially in the bottom chart. At this point of the year, in 2024, income tax is... 76.5% of total revenue. So you can really see how much our total revenue is reliant on that income tax portion and how small a portion the all other revenue. Some of that and all other revenue is that nuance with the local government fund since we haven't received any at this point last year. That's why that 1.8% is kind of low. Um, some other areas where we saw some kind of big variances from 2020. So property and other taxes, as we talked through the property revaluation that occurred, property taxes have grown from 2020 at least about 40%. And then EMS, EMS run or EMS fees are up due to um, a higher level of runs. We still continue to see a higher level of runs that really kind of peaked after the pandemic, but we're still seeing higher um, EMS runs and that's driving up revenue about a million dollars in 2020. And then in the other revenue category, there is a decline from 2020, but um, in 2020, one of the big revenue sources we received in other revenue was the workers' comp distribution during the pandemic. There was a big distribution that went out to a lot of municipalities to kind of help us through the COVID pandemic. We haven't received another one. So <laughs> that is why the other revenue category, if you were to look at it from five years ago, is down about 41.6%. That's it for revenue. Right back to Abby. Okay. So <coughs> next we will talk through the expenditure trends. Um, first up, we have personnel cost. Uh, personnel cost increased 1.8% or uh, slightly under $1.3 million when we compare the personnel cost to 2023. Um, and that's that increase is uh, largely associated with the normal wage increases um, that's offset by the turnover and the sustained vacancies that we're seeing throughout this year, um, or I should say for the past couple of years. Um, civilian wages in the personnel categories increased 2.7% or a little under $600,000. 
um, and that's largely due to the wage and step increases that we are uh, we have in our 2024 budget. Civilian overtime was up 18.4 percent, or 131,300. Um, this is largely due to the continued vacancies that we're seeing in our waste collection team. Um, and also, uh, we have an increased need for paramedics and EMTs in fire department. Um, this is due to that uh, additional engine that is cross-staffed with two medics. Um, that the reason why they're seeing the overtime, increased overtime in the fire department civilian section. Sworn wages were lower by 2.7% or a little under $700,000. And this is largely in the police department because of the continued vacancies that we're experiencing for the past few years. Sworn overtime, on the other hand, um, was up 23.2% or $661,000. And this is largely driven by the minimum staffing requirement um, with having an additional fire engine in service, as well as the higher than expected attrition um, that we have experienced in the fire department. Um, so for context, in the uh, fire department, 2024's budget includes um, us attriting uh, 18 firefighters for the entire year of 2024. For the first six months of 2024, uh, we have attrited 12, which is a 66% attrition rate. Um, and because of that, um, we are having to fill slots with overtime, and that's why we're seeing that increase in the sworn overtime in the fire department. On the contracts and material side, um, excluding other users and transfers to fund the um, capital equipment and um, capital projects, contracts and material costs were up 12.6% or $2.6 million. Um, there are three big categories in contracts and material that are seeing a big dollar increases. Um, the biggest increase is in management and public service contracts. They're up almost 40% or nearly million dollars. And this is driven by the timing of payment for the regional dispatch center. Um, so 2023 had one fewer payment as of mid-year, um, as opposed to 2024 um, has that one more payment. And that's why we're seeing that big increase in management public service contracts. Um, for the maintenance cost, um, they were up almost nearly 40% or a little over or nearly $900,000. Um, when we compare the data to 2023. And this is largely due to the increased cost for computer security um, and then various um, costs associated with, in various different department costs associated with the maintenance of facilities. Payments to internal service funds were also up by 31.1% or $845,000. And this is largely due to the increased fleet repair costs that we've been experiencing. Um, we have uh, seen the same trend throughout this year. The trend started actually later last year and has continued um, as we have increased need for repairing our current fleet. Um, supplies and material cost increased by 348300 and this is largely impacted by the uh, need for supplies in the police department. Um, the increases in contract and material were um, offset by uh, decreases in a couple categories, one being the utility cost. <coughs> utility costs were down 531400 in 2024, and this is due to the one-time cost um, for LED upgrade of street lighting that we experienced in 2023. This was a one-time expense that occurred in 2023 and is not occurring in 2024. That's why we're seeing that decline in 2024. Um, and then the other category is professional services, um, which is up 179,600. Um, this reduction is related to the decrease in the general funds portion of the IT consulting services cost. Um, and so we were able to shift some of the IT consulting costs from the general fund um, to the um, photo enforcement fund. And that's why we're seeing that decline in the general fund. As for the big picture um, on the expenditure trend um, for the five year period from 2020 to 2024, um, collectively personnel and contracts and material have increased by over $15.8 million or 
Off of that $15.8 million, $9.2 million is in personnel cost. And this is largely attributed to the growth in personnel cost, um, which is the wage and line movement that we have experienced year over year. Um, Contracts and material expenses increased 37.5% when we look at the information and compare it to 2022. Um, and that is amount to $6.5 million. Contracts and material expenses were lower in 2020 as the city limited expenditures to essential goods and services in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So 2020, 2020, excuse me, contracts and material were much lower um, in comparison to what we have today in 2024. <coughs> Uh, these pandemic-related supply chain delays um, that we experienced in 2021 um, and to a certain degree continued in 2022 also suggest that contracts and material costs in 2021 and 2022. Um, the cost um, increase drastically into 2023 and 2024, um, not only because of the uh, normal contracts and material expenses uh, that were suppressed during 2020, 2021, and 2022, but also we, because of the fact that we've added some additional costs. A um, uh, couple of the examples of that additional cost are the core security services, um, the contract that we have, the shared contract that we have with the sheriff's office, um, that is adding the cost um, in 2024. Um, and also we have higher maintenance and fleet repair costs that we just talked about in 2024. So that's why we're seeing that growth in 2024, that tremendous growth in 2024 when we compare the information to 2020. Additionally, um, the continued inflationary pressures and the fulfillment of delayed order, um, as we talked about the pandemic related supply chain delays has attributed to this growth in contracts and material over the past five years. And just real quickly, um, the chart below shows the, uh, um, and the chart, Title is incorrect. It's actually contracts and material as a percentage of total general fund expenditure. You can see contracts and material were a bigger portion of the total expenditures in 2020, 2021, and 2022. And that's exactly um, is the reason um, why we're seeing that because of the fact that we had uh, suppressed those contracts and material expenses in 2020, somewhat in 2021, and 2022. And so as we've picked up those contracts and material expenses, the contracts and material um, uh, as a percent of total general fund expenditures has gone down. Um, this is our nation recovery plan update. And as of July 2020, July 24 of 2024, um, total Dayton recovery plan awarded contracts totals to $54.6 million, and so far we have spent $23.1 million. Um, so in the improving our neighborhood category, um, we've spent $8.4 million um, as of July 2024. Um, that amounts to 15.2% of total expenses in this category. Um, for enhancing critical city services, um, so far, we've spent a little over $400,000, which is about 2% of the total allocation for this category. In supporting Black and Brown businesses, um, we've spent almost $2.8 million, which is 36.2% uh, of the total allocation. Um, in catalyzing economic recovery, um, we've spent the entire amount, $7 million. Um, and then for aiding communities, small businesses, uh, and small business recovery, um, the total spent to date um, is nearly $4.5 million, which is 64% of the total allocation. And as the city manager mentioned um, in her opening remarks, um, this is the media status update. Um, as a result of the 2014 charter amendment that instituted our policy budget, um, the city commission adopted a section 49B.02 of the RCGO that prescribes 
prior to commencement of the budget process for the coming fiscal year, the city manager shall present to the commission a status report on the current budget plan. And so in addition to the regular monthly update covering the general fund management statement, the mid-year update includes a review of the uh, revenue circuit breaker and a review of the department variance to the budget. And so this is our circuit breaker. Um, revenue circuit breaker measures the spread of data and helps us understand on average how far away each data point is from the mean value. Um, it's signaled when revenues are significantly below their historical averages. For our, our model, our average or mean is for, for the previous five years, which includes 2019 to 2023. Um, and these are the same categories that we saw in our short statement um, in the second slide. According to the imperial rule, in a normal distribution, about 68% of values will be within one standard deviation, about 95% of the values will be within two standard deviation, and almost 99% of the values will be within three standard deviation. For our purpose, we're using one standard deviation and two standard deviation, with one standard deviation signaling a warning sign, and two standard deviation indicating a high level of monitoring and or corrective actions should be taken. And as you can see here, um, the other charges, charges for services category is failing the one standard deviation test. And this is largely due to the, what Jeanette mentioned earlier, the other charges for services category has a lower revenue in all other charges for services category except one, um, which was recreation charges. Um, local government fund uh, is failing both uh, one standard deviation test and the two standard deviation test, and that's because of the fact that we have not received any revenue for local government fund in 2024. Um, the other category, other revenue category, um, is failing the one standard deviation test, and this is largely due to 2020 having higher revenue. Um, in 2020, um, because of the pandemic, we received a total of three Bureau of Workers' Compensation rebates, um, and that was to help boost the economy due to the pandemic. As of June, one of those three rebates um, uh, was booked by the city, and that is increasing the mean or the average um, for this category, resulting in a fail for that category at one standard deviation. And so nothing to concern here. Um, we have um, a, some timing issue and um, uh, because of the lack of that PWC rebate, we're seeing that, that, that fail for those three categories um, in the one standard deviation and one fail in the uh, two standard deviation test. This is our departmental variance at midpoint, um, total general fund expenditures and central account for 52.5% um, of the annual budget. Uh, most departments are performing within expected variance threshold with the exception of fire information technology, issue nine um, and income tax. The variance experienced by fire department is largely due to the uh, higher overtime costs that we've talked about. Um, they are experiencing higher overtime costs for the first half of the year. Um, we graduated 24 recruits as of June, so we should start to see the decline in that overtime for the second half of the year. Um, for the IT department, the variance is outside of the expected threshold, um, and that's largely because of the timing of payment for the cost related to the technology maintenance. 46% uh, of IT's total budget is in contracts and materials, um, and is largely spent towards technology subscription services and maintenance costs, um, which are somewhat front-loaded, and that's why we're seeing that increased percentage at mid-year. Non-departmental, um, excuse me. Issue nine um, and income tax are seeing that bigger variance and that's largely because of the uh, front loading of investments uh, that we have for the first half of the year. Um, as we continue to towards the uh, remainder of the year, we will start to see normal see those two categories normalize.
So for pre preliminary 2024 year end projections, um, overall revenues are performing over budget and are slightly over year to date actuals when we compare the information to 2023. Uh, specifically, income tax has outperformed year-to-date expectation, and that's largely because of what we talked about, that five Friday phenomenon um, with withholdings. Um, while collections from business profits and individuals experienced a decline for the first half of the year. The threat of revenue loss from work from home still exists, as does the continued uncertainty around the economic slowdown. Expenditures will likely accelerate in the second half of the year, um, and that's due to the staffing challenges that we, we are experiencing in various different departments, um, along with increased cost. Uh, but then nonetheless, we are expected to be within budget at the end of the year. At mid-year point, we expect to end 2024 with a balanced budget um, and the ability to weather the inflationary cost increases that we have experienced over the last couple of years. With inflationary cost increases, rising personnel costs, um, and the economic vulnerability of income tax revenue, along with a possible recession, the 2025 budget must be managed prudently, um, especially given the expiration of ARPA funding at the end of 2024. Um, we know that the ARPA funding is coming to an end um, uh, at the end of 2024. We have been able to manage and balance the budget um, so far for the past few years utilizing the ARPA funding, but it is coming to an end at the end of 2024. Um, so we must manage our 2025 budget prudently um, and make sure that we have a balanced budget in 2025 in the absence of that ARPA funding. Um, here is our employment information, um, uh, and this shows the information from the cycle of heat, which occurred in February of 2020. So in February of 2020, we had 392-600 employment. Um, and from February to April, uh, when we saw the effects of the pandemic, um, the region lost about 60,900 or 15.5% of the job base. Um, 58,800 jobs have been added back since April of 2020, um, and which are only 2,100 lower than the February peak. Um, next, we have the employment by um, various uh, job categories, and this data on this chart is not seasonally adjusted, so there is a bit of a, dif bit of a difference between the two charts. Um, these jobs are... Can you guys still hear me? Yes. <laughs> So we're comparing the same thing here, um, except for that nuance that these are not seasonally adjusted as opposed to the previous chart was seasonally adjusted. Um, these are the jobs that have been added back since the peak, which was in February of 2020. Um, the data is not necessarily for Dayton. This is Dayton MSA, which includes Miami, Montgomery, and Green County. Um, and as you can see on this chart, um, six out of the 10 categories or industries are still lagging behind the February peak. Uh, professional and business services are down 0.6%. Um, information um, has the largest decline. It's down by 24.7%. Uh, manufacturing is down by 4.3%. Government is down 2.2%. Um, education combined with health is down 0.7%. And financial activity sector is down 8.3%. The largest increase the largest increase um, here is in construction category, uh, which is up almost 16% when we, when we compare the data to February of 2020, um, and followed by the leisure and hospita hospitality category, excuse me, which is up 12.3% compared to 2020 peak. So here are our economic indicators. Um, when looking at the economic indicators, all signs are pointing towards a slowing down of the economy. The first chart shows the job opening rate across the United States. 
The national job opening rate as of May of 2024 is 4.9%, as you can see in that red text in the top corner, um, while Ohio's job opening rate is at 4.3%, uh, which is one of the lowest in the country. Um, you can see that in the scale in the chart in the bottom. 4.6% um, and below is the lowest, and Ohio falls within that category at 4.3%. The chart below shows the CPI in the Midwest region. Um, the CPI for all items was 2.5% higher than June of 2023. Um, although higher, the growth has been much slower for the past 12 months. Over the years, um, prices for food rose 1.7% and energy decreased by 0.8%. And this is largely due to the lower prices for gasoline, which was offset by the rising prices for electricity costs and natural gas. Minus food and energy, all other items increased 2.9%. Um, and so that chart also shows that um, slow, slow growth um, in CPI, which is pointing towards that slowing down of the economy. Um, the uh, chart in the top right-hand corner, which is the GDP, um, real GDP increased at 2.8% in the second quarter of this year. This is the first estimate and it is subject to change. Um, the second estimate is based on more uh, complete data, which will be released on August 29th of 2024. Um, according to, to the advanced estimate released by the US Bureau of Economic Analysis, the real GDP rose 1.4% in the first quarter, which compared to the third and the fourth quarter of 2023 was lower by 1.6% or 1.8%. The Bureau of Economic Analysis is attributing the slight acceleration in the second quarter of 2024 to upturn in private inventory investment and an acceleration in consumer spending, which was partly offset by the downturn in residential fixed investment. Um, and then uh, the last chart shows the Ohio's unemployment rate. When we look at the seven largest city in Ohio, um, you can see Dayton has one of the highest unemployment rate um, as of June of 2024. Uh, Dayton's unemployment rate is 6.8%. Um, compared to last time, same time, um, in June of 2023, Dayton's unemployment rate was at 5%. So we are seeing that increase in unemployment rate year over year. Now, Toledo saw a bigger increase. Um, they were at 4.7% and they're at 6.7%. So they saw a 2% increase. Um, while Dayton and Cincinnati, they both saw that 1% increase compared to 2023. Um, to round out uh, general funds 2024, um, Highlights as of June, in the absence of uh, an additional five Friday payroll month, revenues continued to grow stagnantly in the first six months when compared to the same period in 2023, with all but four revenue categories realizing a lower performance. Um, as we saw, personnel costs were 4.1 million or 5.2% below year to date budget. Um, and this is largely attributed to the continued vacancies, um, uh, specifically vacancies that we're seeing in the police department. Contracts and material and other uses were up 16.5% or $3.4 million. And this is largely due to the increased cost as supply chain issues have eased in the um, later part of last year and this year. Um, and this is combined with the inflationary cost increases, which is what's adding to this um, increase year over year in the contracts and material and other uses category. For the first half of 2024, uses exceeded sources by $8.3 million. Um, and as we talked about, this is largely due to the front loading of investment, um, which we do annually. Um, uh, it allows us to uh, fund these investments um, and ensure that we have timely bidding occurring um, for the capital project and capital equipment. Um, along with uh, the front loading of investment, um, the other thing, as we mentioned earlier, the one time cash transfer from the photo enforcement fund, um, which we are using to balance the budget in 2024, um, had not occurred as of June of 2024. It did occur in July of 2024. So you will see that in the next month's statement um, 
um, and that $8.3 million will go down by that $5 million. Um, with the continued rising expenses, um, we must be prudent in monitoring our general fund budget um, as we continue to see the revenues erode year over year for the past um, year, 2023, we saw a flat revenue performance, almost flat revenue per performance, and um, that is the case. If it wasn't for that Five Friday phenomenon, um, we, we would have seen a flat revenue performance in um, as of June of 2024. Um, and so um, our revenues are stagnant for the most part, um, but our expenditures aren't. Expenditures, specifically personnel costs, which is the um, highest cost for the general fund, is continue to rise year over year. So we must be prudent in monitoring our budget um, and making sure that we have a structural balance uh, moving forward. Question. <clears throat> um, okay. Questions, comments, questions? Okay. All good. Okay. Thank you. All right. There's a lot of information I know. Okay. So we will then next go on to our water and sanitary sewer fund update. We'll bring forward Powell and Miss Christ. So we're gonna we're gonna do the well, mic is on yeah. <laughs> I'm sure your mic is on Mike. Oh you didn't do that this way. Yeah, why don't you do the mobile phone? Slide two. Is that okay, Jenna? Yeah, put the little, like down by the minus sign. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right, Mike, director for Department of Water, Beth and Chris, with us, our financial officer. Uh, so, going through, I'll, I'll tell you right now, uh, while it was an exciting quarter operationally, the numbers are not exciting. <laughs> uh, everything is this sort of status quo, right? Which uh, we have the, the funds come in, the funds go out about where we expected. Uh, but so we'll kind of go through them. So just kind of looking through the numbers here, uh, looking at uh, revenues, the uh, revenues were up about 3 million, 10.4% uh, compared to the same quarter last year. When we break that down by city customers and other jurisdictions and other charges for services, city customers were below the forecast, uh, about $27,000. And we had an 8.2% increase over quarter, the same quarter last year, which was about 1.1 million. Uh, other jurisdictions were uh, 120,000 below the budget. And that equated to 10.2% revenue increase over the same quarter last year at 1.2 million. And other charges for services were up uh, $668,000. And that was quite a bit, and it was, we'll talk about it in a little bit, uh, but some process improvements and also increased line sales is what was really behind that, that big increase. Uh, expenses up 0.8%, about $280,000 over the same quarter from 2023. And uh, when we look at increases in personnel, contracts and materials, uh, equipment purchases, those things contributed to that. Also, there was an offset with uh, the capital cash, flow, capital cash transfers. Uh, and debt service uh, with timing related to that. Uh, so personal costs, if you look at the number there, they were up 6.1%, contracts and materials up 7.5%. And uh, that was a lot due to the, the chemicals and some upgrades that we needed to do to our SCADA system for our regulatory compliance. And cash reserves, we didn't need to use those throughout the uh, the second quarter. Well, what is the uh, ceiling on the... Any rate from the line of sale. What's the ceiling? Yeah. There is no ceiling. I will take every last uh, penny I can get from it. Um, really, we're kind of limited from the standpoint of how much we can produce. Um, we have we have more customers requesting the, the line than we have line to, to provide them. Uh, so as we make things more efficient, we use less, we can sell more. Uh, we had one, it's interesting, we had one customer. Uh, that listened to some sales hype from uh, another line company that mines line. Uh, they got out of buying line from us. 
went to the other company and they came knocking back at our door this year, but we had already filled their capacity. So now they said they want on the wait list. So they'll, they'll get back in when we have capacity or whatever. But um, we have a high quality product, which they experienced once they went to the mine line, they saw the difference and they wanted to come back. But at that point in time, we'd already sold their capacity. I ask that question because uh, every time you make a report, and it seems like we have an increase in terms of lime sales. So keep it up. Yeah, well, we're trying. We're trying. The, the, the water supply and treatment uh, crew does a fantastic job. That, 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 well, it's one of two operations in the country that, that do what we do. Um, I think we do it better, uh, but I might be a little biased. But they do a phenomenal job, and our customers attest to that. All right, so as we dig through some of the, the, the revenues, uh, so revenues, as I mentioned, was up 10.4% uh, or about $3 million. When we break those down, city customers up 8.2%. And that's about what we would see. It's right in line with where the, the rate increases were, about $1.1 million. Revenues from other jurisdictions were up 10.2%, uh, about $1.2 million. Now, the other jurisdictions, primarily, that's the biggest part of that is money County. So we've got our cost of service agreement with them that we need to monitor related to that. So, their volumetric and base uh, rates uh, were up, and that's it's right in the neighborhood that we were seeing there. There was a little bit of bill timing. It, it's very, very hard from one quarter of one year to another quarter of the next year to get the exact same routes and, and things like that. But uh, some accounts were up a little bit. Some some were more red one, one time last year than this year. But in essence, it's it's in the same ballpark. Uh, we're, we're running about the same what we expected. Uh, the revenues for other charges for services were up uh, 40. Here's what we were talking about: the 43 and a half percent, or 668 thousand dollars, and some change. Uh, and, and that was really the the lime sales. There, there are also in this category. Um, we we switched around a little bit with the other charges for services. Uh, I think Ken talked to you about that the last time. And, and revenue, we trued up some of the things that are in each of those categories. So we're still uh, tracking those things. Uh, so some taps were added to this category, but the biggest share is the lime sales. Um, and let's see, revenues from, uh, let's see, revenues from other revenue was up 4.2%, a little bit over $100,000. Uh, so we're, we're continuing to track uh, all of these things and uh, we'll, we'll continue to report out. Looking at expenses, personnel was up 6.1%. As we break that out, uh, just under $400,000 was in wages. Uh, some of the things that we, we looked at there uh, were we at averaged seven more positions in 2024 than we did in 2023. We we're aggressively trying to fill the vacant positions. And so as we look at the average, so that's what contributed to that uh, increase this year over last year. So we've got the fringes, 141,000, uh, the insurance, 124,000, and overtime, 114,000. Uh, that really, the big driver in overtime here is operations. And it's the shift work uh, where we don't have enough operators to cover all the shifts and we have to use overtime to cover the off shifts. Uh, looking at contracts and materials, they were up seven and a half percent or about seven hundred seventy thousand uh, dollars. Some of the big drivers there are utilities um, really here, natural gas. And it's it's our natural gas supplier increases that really generate this. So we've got a supplier and we've got a transporter, center points a transporter, but uh, Exelon is our supplier and there was an increase in natural gas. So that's what drove that. Uh, other expenses were up a little bit over half a million dollars. The big driver here were some projects. Uh, we had uh, SCADA projects that were done. And this was for, we got a heads up from the EPA a little bit over a year ago, they did an assessment. After some of the things that help happen elsewhere in the country, uh, cybersecurity related to, to utilities, uh, the, the EPA went around the country and did assessments at all, all utilities, including ours. Ours scored very well. They told us that we were already doing all of the things that they were going to recommend the first year. Uh, they said, but coming down the pike was exactly this. They were going to want some improvements with SCADA. And so we went ahead and, and took care of that. So that's what that, that project is related to. Um, continue to refine our SCADA system. And also we did some CDL training. We did, we're hiring that service now instead of doing it inside. That's in conjunction with public works and other city departments. And for supplies and materials, uh, they're up $65,000. Now that number could have been a lot larger uh, because of there's been price increases with, with chemicals, particularly chlorine on the water side, uh, large price increases. However, what we've done is we've done a few things on the chemical side ourselves. For instance, we, we had our uh, carbon dioxide certified 
by the National Science Foundation, which makes it good enough to use in food products, which like our water is. And so we're able now to use our carbon dioxide from the lime kiln, not only in the lime kiln, but also in the operations in the plant. So it reduced the amount of carbon dioxide we need to purchase by like 75%. So this number could have been a lot larger if it hadn't been defrayed by the cost of avoidance of us providing our own CO2 and reducing our reliance on CO2 by the outside market too. So, but that one little number doesn't look like much, but it could have been huge if we hadn't defrayed the cost with our operations. Well, going to sanitary, uh, same sort of thing here. Things are about where we would expect them to be. Uh, let's see, looking at revenues, they're up 11.7% or about $2.4 million. Looking at city customers, below the forecast, about 1%, a little bit over $100,000 um, with a 6% increase quarter over quarter from 2023 to 2024, so about $600,000. Other jurisdictions were above the forecast by 0.4%. Like I said, it's relatively where we are expecting about $26,000. 6.9% uh, increase Look when we're looking at 2023 to 2024, $474,000. Um, and really, this is right in line with our rate increases that we, we anticipated. Uh, the other charges for services were up 44.6% uh, or about $1.3 million. Uh, and that's really basically one or two of our large industrial users increase biological oxygen demand, the strength of their uh, um, waste material, as well as the total suspended solids that they, that they give us that we, we actually surcharge for. So those things are up. Uh, I'll take them. Um, and, and we bill for when we have to treat it. So that's what really drove that, that higher number. The expenses were up 6.9% or about 1.2 million. Uh, the drivers there, capital transfer, as well as personnel and contracts and material. Uh, looking at the personnel number, 2.6% higher compared to 2023. Contracts and materials were up 8.5%. Um, and, and really the contracts and materials here, uh, it could be a little misleading, but it's really for projects that were completed late in 2023 that were invoiced and billed early in 2024. So that's where that really increases there. It's project related and timing. Uh, capital improvement expenditures were up uh, due to the transfer timing. And once again, on this side, we didn't need to use the, the cash reserve. Either. So looking at the, the details on uh, the revenue side, like I mentioned, up 11.7% uh, revenues from city customers. The, the rate increase here was about five and a half percent. So it's right about what we would expect. Six percent is what we were looking for. Other customer, other jurisdictions uh, was up 6.9 percent. Once again, right about what we expected. Uh, and th that even is with a little of the bill time. And we went through and looked at all of the various different um, routes that were ran and bills that were uh, paid last year and this year. There were about four different. But still, it's about what we expected. Uh, revenues from other charges for services were up 44%. Uh, that's that 1.3 million about the, the large industrial users we had mentioned, the, the BOD and the total suspended solids. Looking at personnel costs, uh, they were up 2.6%. Um, here we averaged one additional person on the sanitary side compared to 2023. That's why the number is a little smaller, but still we're trying to fill all of the positions. We're just a little bit more successful on the water side than sanitary side but we're still trying to fill positions. Um, and then looking at some of the other things here, overtime was really based upon the shift vacancies like we talked about on the water side and uh, the fringes and the health insurance were where they were, 40,000 and 13,000 uh, respectively. On the contracts and materials, the 6.4% increase uh, from last year, uh, other equipment maintenance, these are the projects. So like in late 2023 at the plant, we did uh, some pump rebuilds and some motor purchases for water reclamation. Ordered those at the end of 2023 and they got invoiced and we paid them early 2024. So that's where the difference there is. Um, and then also we did some late 2023 improvements at the water reclamation facility at the, on, on the clarifiers at the plant. Uh, other professional services were up um, $264,000. Uh, it's really timing. We do the, the Duke's root control for our uh, sanitary collection system to combat roots within the, in the system. And it's just the timing as to when they can get out and actually perform the work that we, we hire them for. And it, they did more or less one year than the other. But it's the same work that's done if we look at, at it throughout the entire year. It's just timing. Um, same thing with bill timing associated with the costs allocated with the admin costs that gets billed back to the sanitary fund. 
and sludge disposal. Here at Timon, we had two more bills in 2024, and there was also a price increase of about 5%. So that's what contributed to the sludge disposal increase of 181000 So when we look at it, I told you it was going to be boring. Uh, when we look at everything, everything was about what we expected. Uh, nothing. Lots of things happened in operations like we kind of talked about, but as far as the numbers, uh, we, we got what we expected to come in. And, and we put out what we needed to put out, but it was about what we expected. So total revenue for water and sanitary was was higher compared to 2020, 2023. That's basically because we had rate increases and our, our uh, revenue tracked uh, very consistently with the rate increases. And the little differences were really due to bill timing and, and things like that. Uh, the other services increased and revenue uh, decreased. Those are those internal improvements. Can I talk to, to you about the last, uh, last quarter? And while we're still... Um, tweaking those to make sure we get a steady state uh, for those who are reporting in the future as well. And for 2020, 2024, uh, personnel was up uh, both in water and sanitary as we filled additional positions. The contracts and materials were, were up. Um, and really this was, as we mentioned, project timing and some upgrades that we did for regulatory compliance. Um, we, we do still get these price increases and we're experiencing those particularly on the chemical side. And we've been trying to combat them with what we do operationally to kind of uh, think smarter and work smarter as well uh, to, to kind of mitigate those things. And we've been pretty successful with the CO2 as one example. And um, we've really noticed a, a decrease in the interruptions from the supply chain because that's been a tune I've been singing for the last couple of years. We just can't get things uh, because of the supply chain. Uh, so that's starting to ease up. So we're starting to get back into um, our, our, our normal kind of thing. So those things are have eased slightly. And once again, we didn't need to use the, the reserve uh, of the cash balance for water nor sanitary through the second quarter of both water and sanitary. Any questions? Questions? <clears throat> Good. I do have one question. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. It's more so a general question and it just, um, thank you, Mr. Powell and team, thank you. It's more so a general question and it actually just sparked um, from the, the general fund um, briefing that we just heard from, from, this, from the team, the finance team. And so my question is in, in lines of the 6.8 unemployment rate that we're seeing in 2024. And knowing that we have a number of vacancies and we're all actively trying to fill those vacancies. So my question is more so like, what are we doing? What efforts are being made to help reduce that 6.8? And it's not geared solely to you all, but just the overall question in terms of like, are we having those conversations? What are we, I know we're actively recruiting them. I know at one point, maybe last year, there was a wage assessment that was completed to kind of compare and see where we are internally in terms of the organization overall. The wage assessment's being done this okay. year. This year. Uh, we've been looking at this for a couple of years, Commissioner, because we've been having this problem, you know, since COVID, like everyone else. And so there has been um, cross collaboration across departments about how we advertise. I know that um, HR and civil service have worked really closely on, you know, job descriptions, barriers that could be reducing interest, and as well as the wage inflation. As we've been bringing people on, we've had to bring on people at the higher levels than what the job description entry level was. So, and and being more creative. There's been videos produced there and pushed out. There's been really creative flyers and recruitment activities as well as attending more job fairs and things like that. So they've been, we, we've been working at this for, uh, and continue to work at it and bring, steal practices and ideas from others. <clears throat> I can tell you from the water department standpoint, and the city manager is absolutely correct. They have been super in supporting us. And well, if we can find candidates for certain positions, particularly some of the technical professional ones or what have you, and we're competing against all the other water utilities and everyone, even private industry or whatever, they've been super supportive with, with helping us to, to be able to, to make offers that are in the range that can attract the, the talent to us. And we've been successful in getting some engineers and some others. Very, very hard to find um, 
uh, position. So I thank city manager for, for helping us in, in that regard. Um, but also we've been doing some things and we've involved other city departments too. Uh, we do the, we have a, a career conference each year and uh, many of you have been, been at that and kicked kick that off for us. And so uh, we've actually invited and other departments have, have been a part of that too. Um, where we're trying to attract some of the high school students into the into the career. Um, the city manager, deputy city manager, have connected us with uh, Dayton Public Schools, and we've been engaging with them with how to get uh, students in for internships. Uh, and what we like to do is we like to grow the individuals through high school to have them uh, start in some of these uh, entry-level positions right in, in our department. And if they have experience uh, interning, that makes them even that much more valuable to us in transitioning right into some of these positions that we that we have. Uh, and so we're, we're working with uh, Dayton Public Schools on that, uh, as well as uh, when we look at uh, some of the other universities, uh, we've got some work that we're doing. Our um, uh, Jackie Richmond is over our administration division, and she's working with Central State University. Uh, with uh, some of the key programs there, some of the, uh, I forget the doctor's name, but a couple of the doctors there that uh, we're trying to do some targeted um, uh, internships with even the college students. Same thing for n not so much the entry level positions, but the positions that require degrees and such, we want to attract them too. And we'd like to have them have experience. And so they're the logical candidate when we go to, to hire for those positions. They've already done the work um, and, that, and that sort of thing. And we, we kind of start out young too, the, the water, um, Children's Water Festival, the fourth graders, mm -hmm. let them know about what's in with water. Um, Boonshoff, we're, we're, we're doing some things with them. We're, we're trying to get the word out as, as much as possible that there are great careers in water. Uh, you don't need a college degree for, for many of them. And um, yeah, we're trying. I mean, it, and it's tough because we're just like every other utility across the country. There's a mass reduction through retirements and things through COVID and everyone's, everyone's fighting for the same people. Yeah, so that's forced us to be creative, look at structuring even of jobs, right? Part-time versus full-time. So, cause some people want to retire, but they don't want to, they, they want to do like 10 or 15 hours a week, right? And so we're, we're looking at all of those things because we know how important it is to fill these jobs. Well, thank you both, I appreciate it. Do we have an expected uh, timeline for the assessment, for the wage uh, assessment? Do you remember the timeline for the assessment that HR uh, students? Started, yes. I think they're just getting underway. So mm -hmm. I think it's something to be done by the end of the year. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> just want to add, add on a bit to the, uh, um, one of the things that you talk about tomorrow is the last day that the department is working with a bunch of young people the schools. In fact, they're using one of your spaces with the water department. Um, and then that seems to have created a lot of excitement with, uh, with those young people as well. And so that's another good thing as far as that's happening. As far as adults are concerned, one of the questions I had, when you're out between some of the spaces, and you look at some of the things that we have been doing over the last several years, and some of it noted by the surveys that we have that go out to the community, that talk about some of the growth factors that we have, some successes, the aspect of more businesses coming to Dayton, and the aspect of uh, medium income rising. Do those things enter into the conversations when individuals are thinking about uh, working for the city of Dayton? We definitely I mean, have think yes, but just, you didn't have much of the conversation about that. We've definitely in recruitment um, amplified benefits because the benefits, what we got in some of our um, conversations with employees that have been here five years or less have said, you have to emphasize your benefits more. You have a great benefit package and making sure that folks know the great benefits. We've also worked really um more strategically about the career ladders or the opportunities that you have once you get in, you know, there's opportunities to grow and, and be here. I know that we've worked on those there. Okay. Thanks. Any questions? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Water. We'll now have our... Uh, update from our Department of Aviation. And I know that Gil will probably talk about this in the presentation. 
Um, a pretty exciting times going on at Dayton International Airport. As you all know from our previous reports, we aren't completely recovered from COVID. However, we are continuing to see great increases in passenger traffic, uh, largely due to airlines bringing in bigger planes, airlines um, bringing in more new routes or restoring routes. You know, they do have a little bit of a pilot shortage they're working through. But what I want to really highlight here is that the airport team has been incredibly strategic on the investments that have been made and our airport has never looked better. And you know, as I've talked about development, you know, for the last 28 years, it's really important that that public investment, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's, you know, the the tending to the garden. Places have to look nice and have to look like they have been invested in to attract other investment. And so the great work the airport has been doing, uh, airport staff has been doing at the airport has led to confidence from the airlines into Dayton International Airport as well. And that's really important part. Largely, you know, they still have to get through their pilot shortage and their fleet situation. And, but the great team that Gil, or the great work that Gill and his team are doing in managing that airport so that it looks and receives great investment and attention is making it easier for the airlines to justify reinvesting in Dayton and growing in Dayton. So I just want to say thanks to Gill and his team because I think they're doing an amazing job. Thank you, City Manager. Uh, Gil Turner, Director of Aviation. So just as City Manager said, a lot of things are great things are happening. Uh, our employments are moving in the right direction. Uh, as of the end of this first quarter, we're up about 7.1%, about 313, 14,000 passengers have flown through our airport in the first quarter. So we're excited about that. Uh, all right. With the numbers, uh, I'm happy to report that our uh, total source is up about $1 million, which is great, about, we represent about 6.6% .6 increase year over year. Now, total sources include airport rescue grants or down a little bit. And that's the only reason why that's down, sure, because we have not drawn down our final ARPA draw as of yet. Uh, it's been drawn down, but it didn't show up in the first quarter. So third quarter, you'll see that. But we're doing well even without making that drawdown in the first quarter. So uh, that's all good, good news. Uh, our airline revenues are up by 286,000 or about 6.9% compared to the second quarter of 2023. This is due to more landing fees and more, as uh, city manager referenced, the airlines are switching over from uh, uh, the uh, CRJ 200 small aircraft to the narrow body aircraft, which is like the CRJ 7s and the e E-175s and uh, Airbuses and uh, various other aircraft. So we're seeing larger aircraft coming in. So we're collecting a little bit more landing fees and we also did uh, increased the landing fee up about maybe two cents last year, earlier this year. So it didn't go up very much, but still that it helps out a lot. So we're seeing additional revenue there in landing fees and also additional revenue using the space rent inside the terminal. Non-airline revenues are up about 700000 or 7.9, driven by higher revenue from parking and other non-airline revenue sources. Our total uses have increased by about 500000 or 3.6% year over year. Personnel costs did go up about 225,000 or 4.4, 4.6%, but it does remain uh, below our 2024 budget, uh, about 5.1%. Uh, capital equipment costs are up about 653,000 or 871.4%. This is due to, uh, like uh, Mr. Powell explained, that there was some equipment that was delivered, uh, uh, that was ordered in 23 that didn't get delivered to early 24. So the payment does come out of you know our budget here, so it's a 2024 purchase order. Of hour it came, it shows up in the 2024 budget. Um, our contracts material and uses up by 1.4 million, or about 22.8 percent uh, year over year, but remain uh, 123,000 or 0.9 percent below year to date. Budget. So everything is looking good on the positive side. Uh, there are a few things we'll, as we get into the uh, slides uh, of detail, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, 
have to talk about the operating revenues. There's two categories we have is the airline revenues and the non-airline revenues. So um, the airline revenues, like we talked about, increased by 286,000 or 6.9% year over year. There's the landing fees and uh, space rents collected uh, this year. And the non-LR revenue side increased by 7,000 or 7.9%. So, and this is uh, a couple of things happened here uh, with the, uh, we had a, a land sale down at the South Airport. We sold about 22 acres down at the Dayton Wright Village Airport. So that accounted for that additional uh, revenue on the non-LR revenue side. And here it breaks down a little bit the components of the airline revenue side. Like we talked about the terminal space rents and the landing fees. So you can see, you know, over the, over time, we have uh, started to get back to where we were back in uh, 2020. Uh, the terminal space rent in 2020 was 2.5, and now we're at 2.6. So we're doing pretty good uh, there. So that increased about 3.1 percent. And then the landing fee side uh, in 2020 is at 1.4. Now we're at 1.7. So things are, you know, all going on a positive direction. So we're moving in the right direction, just, you know, still haven't uh, fully recovered. And now the airlines, now that, as Shelly mentioned, are still struggling with uh, aircraft delivery. You know, I'm saying they have a lot of pilots now, just don't have the captains. They're missing the captain point. There's a lot of, so you see, probably read in the news that American Airlines, they're stopped hiring. Uh, PSA, I think they're, you know, asking some of their uh, pilots to take a leave of absence for a little while because things are slowing down a little bit as as a result of the uh, late delivery of aircraft by Boeing. Uh, so that's been a problem for them. So once they, they get take delivery of aircraft, things should start to slow back up a little bit. Right now, things are kind of slowing down. And, and also, I think a lot of people are starting to uh, slow down as far as the leisure travel. So you're seeing things that kind of go soft a little bit <coughs> over capacity. All the various airlines out there now, Spirit, Frontier, and all these others out there. So things are just kind of oversaturated right now. Things are taking, making an adjustment. We get into the components of the non-airline revenue side. We have the parking, uh, which represent about a 9.5 percent increase. Uh, the rental car concessions are. Or down a little bit. I had to dig really deep to find out what was going on that with that because looking at the records that I receive every month, you know that we're everything is going up. But when you compare it to 2023, it's showing that we're down a little bit. So I had to go back a little bit further to the beginning of the pandemic to see what was happening. And because the rental cars pay a mag, and then when the pandemic happened, the mag was dropped. So then we made an adjustment. And then, you know, when the revenues start to flow, then that shows uh, a boost. So in 2023, we show there was a higher amount of revenue received in 2023. And then, and then in 2024, where we did a, uh, the setup was a little bit less. And then also we gave them a credit. We received the uh, CRISO grant from the FAA to give the uh, rental cars a credit. So that was kind of tricky to go, what just happened here? Why is this showing that we were down? And as I looked deeper and deeper into it, I found out that was the reason why, even though it shows that we're down, however, you know, if once that everything's all settled, we're, we're on track. So it's not a not an issue for us. Our concessions in the terminal, uh, really we was talking about the main ones are the uh, post parodies and uh, and uh, was a food and beverage and news and gift shop. Those are doing quite well. Um, so they're up about 98,000 21.6%. And the other non revenue revenues increased by 393,000 13.3% compared to 22. And this is, again, we talked about the land sale uh, down at the South Airport. So we're seeing that additional revenue that came in uh, for Again, uh, we talked about the, uh, the rescue grant. So this is our final year of uh, uh, accepting an airport rescue grant. The final one is about $3.6 million that we're gonna draw down. Uh, it should be uh, shown in the uh, third quarter presentation and that will be it for us. So, but we're, like I said, we're doing very well. 
Uh, without this year, so I'm kind of happy that we didn't see it in this first half. You know, presentation it kind of shows that you know we're kind of yeah, everything is uh, is going to balance out for our uh, revenues without the uh, even without the uh, uh, grant. The total we received about twenty seven million dollars. Personnel costs, they're up about 225,000 or 4.6% year over year. This is due to the annual wage increase or step, uh, step increases for employees. And the over cost, uh, overtime costs went down a little bit, 20.6%. And this is due to our uh, temporary contract services uh, and cleaning services that we're assuming in uh, 2024. Because of a lot of the vacancies that we're having, uh, we've had uh, Moonlight was helping us with the... Uh, on front drive with our policing, but we were short staff on policing. But now uh, things are getting better. We're only down about one police officer position. And uh, the cleaning staff is the, probably the weakest area we're having for us keeping cleaning staff. There's constant revolving door uh, with the cleaning staff. We can never get up to the target number that we wanted. Uh, so we're still using uh, cleaning staff. So our overtime with our permanent staff is, is down quite a bit. Contracts material expenses, uh, they've increased a little bit by 22.8% or nearly 1.4. Uh, this is due to like professional services costs. Uh, they went up about uh, 350000 uh, Again, we talked about this, just the uh, temp staff we're using for the policing, such as Moonlight, and also we're using uh, for the cleaning staff. The utilities went up about 14.2%, also about $148,000. Marketing went up 127,000. This is, you know, we, Linda Hughes retired and what she did went ahead and paid some of those uh, invoices up front, such as the uh, marketing uh, 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 things that we, uh, contracts that we normally pay a little bit later, but she went ahead and paid them before she retired. So it's kind of preloaded. Uh, uh, maintenance cost is up about 25.3%. Uh, this is due to the late payment of a bill and from 2023. And our fleet costs are up about 40.1% uh, due to increased uh, repair costs. And uh, this is the one that kind of talked about our um, airlines. Because American Airlines is our uh, top airline. They handle about 50% of our traffic at the Dayton Airport, as you can see uh, across the board to the top. Uh, America in 2020, 90 some thousand. 2021, 111,000. 2022, you know, 146. So the point is that they keep increasing, you know, number of passengers. The only one, as we talked earlier, is Allegiant. You know, that's the uh, leisure travel down to the Florida market, such as Punta Gorda, Sanford, and uh, St. Pete. As you can see, that's kind of slowing down a little bit, and we're not seeing. So we got to work on helping them. Uh, we're going to market that a little bit more, try to get more people to utilize uh, that service. But we're seeing a, a slight decline there, we're up about 29,000 or 21,000 uh, compared to 24,000 last year. So a little bit soft there. Uh, but overall, we're up with increase, 7.1% uh, compared to last year. So uh, I'm pleased there. But yeah, I don't like to see any of our airlines, you know. Uh, moving in the, the wrong direction as far as uh, number number of passengers. And to summarize, our total sources up by $1 million or 6.6% 6 .6 compared to 2023. And this is due to the parking and the other non airline revenue. So uses are up by 570000 or 3.6%. Personal expenses are up to $25,000 due to the wage increases, uh, contracts, materials, and other uses up 22.8% year over year. Uh, capital equipment expenses up 653,000 or 871.4% uh, of equipment and time of payment of item purchase in 2023. Uh, department ended second quarter 2024 with sources exceeding uses by 185,500. The department plans to draw down and close out the ARPA grant funds in 2024. That's that $3.6 million we've talked about. 
Uh, aviation will continue to diligently track the financial progress of the airport and ensure liquidity and operation stability. So, uh, a few things to note that I want to tell you about. If you haven't read in the paper that you know we did receive a two million dollar appropriation from the state of Ohio, so we're excited about that to help us uh, and make improvements to Concourse B. So that is exciting news, and we just before I came down here today, I submitted an application for. Uh, a $7 million grant to the FAA under the bipartisan infrastructure law to uh, get a grant to improve Concourse B. So we'll put that $2 million, if we get the grant of $7 million with the $2 million, then we have a $9 million grant to make improvements to Concourse B. So that's exciting. Also, um, Senator Sherrod Brown uh, put us in for an earmark of $2 million uh, for uh, Terminal Drive Access Road. We want to make improvements to the entryway to the airport to that overhead bridge on 40. We want to make it just spruce it up a little bit, say welcome to Dayton, welcome to Dayton, you know, so I think that'll look really nice. So we're hopeful that we get that those funds for that. Uh, you also probably saw in the news that United Airlines did uh, increase service to Washington and Dulles. So that's all all good news. So uh, that's exciting to me, you know, when I see, you know, the airlines increase service and uh, also the uh, just a, a note with United Airlines, which is one of our, you know, greatest partners, they have really committed to uh, us with Denver. That's That flight is still doing very well, daily service, and they send me weekly reports on how that flight is doing. And every week I see it's a 76-seater aircraft, and most of the time the minimum is about 65 people, you know, on that aircraft. So it's, you know, it's doing quite well, about a 90% lower factor. So I'm excited that that continues to grow, if that continues to uh, perform the way it's performing, we should see a larger aircraft probably sometime by next year, this year, this time next year. So it's all good news. Um, also had a great uh, air show. If you guys all came out, I mean, saw most of you there. Uh, so about 75,000 people attended. So that was really, really good. And uh, so, and we're working uh, with, uh, for job, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Turner Sloss, you mentioned about the jobs and stuff, you know, uh, Sinclair, they're going to have a, a, a job here. I think it's going to be uh, September 19th. September 19th. September 19th. It's going to be at the Sinclair hangar. So that's going to be kind of good to, to showcase. And we're going to have a lot of our equipment doing the same thing you're doing as a parlette, you know, with the uh, DPS students. So they're going to showcase the various careers and opportunities that are in aviation. And I know uh, Sierra Nevada just had a job there. I believe it was down in Miamisburg last month. So that's kind of good that they're hiring a lot of people. Um, also, there's going to be an announcement uh, at our Dayton Wright Brothers Airport, uh, Wright State. I probably saw it in the paper, I think it was right after the air show, they announced that they're going to work with the First Flight Aviation to uh, start a, a, a flight school down there. <clears throat> so it's exciting. So I think they might have a press release in the next two weeks, so something might be coming out in the next couple of days. So be on the lookout for that. I but, think that we've had um, probably uh, almost all the universities locally start looking at having some type of a flight program. Yes. I think uh, my state is first in terms of doing that, but uh, in terms of pilots even. So mm -hmm. it's all a good thing for us. Yes, so, so that's all I have. Is there anything in the air for uh, other uh, markets? Well, <laughs> I will not, will not talk about it right now, but <laughs> <laughs> there's always something. You're always in communication with someone you know, whether or not it's going to materialize or not, I, I can't you know, say or not, but, you know, but there are always talks. They cross their fingers and cross their toes and cross your eyes again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Any comments? Yes, yes, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Dixon, for highlighting all the great work that's being done by Mr. Turner and the, and the entire aviation team. Thank you, sir, for being here as well. Thank you both. Um, my question is, and more so in lines of, I know often we're in competition with some of the other, other airports, if you will. How are we in terms of the rates and with that being said, in terms of the competition with other areas, Cincinnati, Columbus, how are we doing in rates? Well, uh, in terms of rates, we're a lot, lot higher than Cincinnati and Columbus. Uh, a lot of the, uh, their rates and charges based on the number of employments that they have and the weights that they have. So we're, given the fact that we have less 
employments, less aircraft coming in and out of here, then that, that means we collect less uh, landing weights and stuff. So, and we can only charge the airlines for what they use. You know, they, they use the runway, they use our, our maintenance of the airfield. So that's, the, that's how we charge them based on that. But the more aircraft come in here, the more weights come in, that, can, that drives <coughs> that cost down. So there's an option also, you can subsidize that. So we could subsidize that, uh, but still, you know, as you know, we're still coming out of our you know, recovery right, right. financially. So there's no, there's not much, there's no funding there to do that. Uh, but we are a lot higher in the other airport than our. Thank you. Well, again, congratulations to you and all of the great work. Thank you, Nick. Oh, we're we're all done. Yeah, we're You're done. done. We're done. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Dan.